He is the first in his family, like so many, to graduate from college. His story is the story of the American immigrant. Valley Congressman Jim Costa honoring Hispanic Heritage Month on the House floor this week by recognizing Dr. Joseph Castro, who was recently named the new chancellor of the California State University system. Well, something tells me the lucky number is eight here. Dr. Castro became the eighth president at Fresno State back in 2013, and now he'll serve as the eighth chancellor for the CSU system, overseeing 23 campuses. Dr. Castro joins me now exclusively once again on Sunday Morning Matters. How are you, sir? I'm well. How are you, Alex? On? I'm good. I, let me look at that background. You're ready to go. Uh, obviously, this is a big time for you and your family to be in this brand new position. Um, give me your first initial thoughts of accepting this position. Well, I started to have conversations with the trustees about this uh, over the summer, interviewed then, and then interviewed again in the final round uh, last Sunday. And then they appointed me on, they, they told me on Monday that I had the job and then they announced it on Wednesday. So it was a very quick turnaround and I'm still absorbing uh, the magnitude of it, but I, I'm very excited about the new opportunity and I have some sadness about leaving my home here in the San, San Joaquin Valley. You know, we've talked about that number eight, but really you're the first Mexican-American chancellor for the CSU system, and you always talk about being bold. Uh, this is a bold significance for you when you talk about that. Yeah, that part of it. And then, uh, as you may know, I'm the first native Californian to be president here at Fresno State and then also to be chancellor, and that, that's also kind of stunning the California uh, person has never uh, led the CSU. And for me, it's just a wonderful opportunity to give back uh, to this new generation of future leaders. You know, we want to take you back a little bit. Back in 2019, Chancellor Timothy White, that's when he initially announced his retirement. The Board of Trustees came to you and said, we wanted you to be a candidate at that time, but you declined. So what changed? Yeah, I was, I was invited to be a candidate. Um, the issue was, as many people in the community know, my wife's mother was very ill at that time and ended up passing away, unfortunately. So there, there was, it was not a good time for me. My mother had been in the hospital. My father-in-law had been in the hospital. Uh, 2019 was pretty rough on us. So the timing was not right. And uh, so I was planning to support whomever they chose and then uh, the, the board decided on its own to ask Chancellor White to stay longer, and he agreed to do so. And so that delayed uh, their search, and then they came back and started, you know, talking with me again in the mm -hmm. summer. And um, the rest is, as you say, the rest of the story is I'm going to be the next chancellor. You know, the governor even called out uh, and, and said, hey, the, you know, welcomed you to the CSU system. Uh, obviously, once you get into that position in early January, you're going to have much of a lifeline to the governor's office and obviously uh, be talking with state lawmakers about the CSU system. What's the very first thing on your priority list about the CSU system? Well, I, I met with him last week, and, and also I've met already with about 40 of our legislators. And my message is really the importance of the CSU to the state of California. I mean, it's vital. Uh, we're part of the solution during COVID and post-COVID. You know, we educate almost 500,000 students across the 23 campuses, and one in 10 employees in California is a CSU graduate. So I, I know they understand that. I want to remind them of that and then inspire them to invest more over time in the CSU because the return on investment is great. Well, you know, uh, the last big decision I, I would say that you had to make here, maybe there's some more to come, but obviously athletics, that was a massive money maker, specifically football for the university. Um, you were not in favor of the student athletes coming back and, and playing uh, this season at first, actually this year, but uh, obviously that's changed with the vote that you gave uh, just last week. So why do you believe that there will not be an outbreak and that, that it, it is safe to play football at this? time? I guess the way I'd put it is uh, 
I've always wanted them to come back, just like I want all the students to come back. The, the issue is when and how to ensure uh, that they're safe, at least as safe as possible. Uh, there's no zero risk option, as you know, in this environment, Alex, on. Uh, the thing that gave me confidence to move forward is our strong partnership with the Valley Children's Healthcare. And uh, Todd Suntrapak and his team have been wonderful. Uh, they're going to help us with testing and the conditions in our community were the other, it was the other factor. And so we just did get approval from the county. So obviously there will be a financial hole from the pandemic uh, for the university. Who do you think you may pick uh, in this whole job search that uh, you're looking for someone to replace you? How does, how does Fresno State now climb out of this because of the transition uh, at, the, uh, at the presidential level? That's a very tough thing to do. Uh, and then we want to finish with a couple of things. Uh, one, your biggest regret. And then the other, your greatest accomplishment. Thank you. Well, first of all, um, I've been very conscientious of the fact that I need to leave uh, the university in good in a good place to the to the next president. So I've been making some of these very difficult decisions with my colleagues now, so that those don't get kicked down the road. Um, and I think that the way that we're proceeding. Uh, with a really great enrollment, in fact, the largest student enrollment in our history this fall during the pandemic. We're strong on the revenue side. Uh, we've made adjustments on our state budget side. So I feel good about that. Uh, the chancellor, Chancellor White, is going to make the decision about an interim president mm -hmm. uh, in the next few weeks. He will consult with me. And then um, I will, as the new chancellor in January, very likely with the Board of Trustees launch the search for a permanent president. And my hope is that we will have a new president named, a permanent president named by May, mm -hmm. and that that person could start certainly by the summer or by the next fall. So that's the way that I see things uh, kind of moving forward. Uh, biggest accomplishment, I'd say, uh, increasing our uh, graduation rates uh, by over 10 points mm -hmm. and every point matters because it represents uh, talented students who normally wouldn't get the opportunity to get a higher education and now they're leaders in our valley and their children will be as well. So that's the thing that I cared the most about mm -hmm. uh, throughout my presidency. Biggest regret is uh, leaving home. <laughs> yep. Mama is not happy with me. <laughs> yeah, I get it, that home cooking. <laughs> hey, we sure do appreciate the time. We appreciate uh, you always being bold and always being uh, just available and upfront about everything. We appreciate the time once again here on Sunday Morning Matters. Uh, soon to be Chancellor Dr. Castro. Appreciate it. Thank you.